Hello, my name is Alexas Vasiliadis. I'm a PhD student at the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. And I was going to talk about our study, a knowledge retrieval framework for household objects and actions with external knowledge, which was the submission 24 of the Semantics 2020 conference. So basically, we have constructed a domain dependent knowledge retrieval framework for household environments with external knowledge which can be used by any cognitive robotic system as a primary or secondary knowledge representation model. So, what we offer is knowledge about sequence of actions and how to perform human skill tasks, answer queries about household objects and actions, and perform semantic matching between the nodes of our knowledge graph and the nodes of the knowledge graph, be it the Cosignet and Wordnet. So, as mentioned, our vision was to create a knowledge representation which could be used by any cognitive robotic system as a primary or secondary form of knowledge representation. And on top of that, create a query mechanism that will uh, automatically answer the most common and crucial questions that are addressed to a cognitive robotic uh, system that acts in household environment. And those questions was the, were the result the extensive survey that we did on topic on the topic of uh, household uh, robotics. Uh, <clears throat> on top of that, uh, for the reason that we did not want to be too restricted to the amount of queries that we could answer, we performed this, we constructed the semantic uh, mechanism that uh, connects uh, our framework with external knowledge from the Wikipedia concept in Wordnet. And as a side effect, uh, we managed to construct the largest ontology about object, objects, actions, and activities. So, basically, our uh, ontology was inspired by the virtual home dataset, which is a dataset that contain, contains a sequence of actions about how to perform human skilled activities. So what we did was to take their hierarchy and put them in a, on the, in the form of representation that could be used as a linked open data. So what you see here, which is the, the class activity, contains all of the activities that are, were part of virtual home uh, dataset, as well as the hierarchy between them. Uh, we need to mention that uh, there were more activities, but they could not fit into the pictures that we show. On top of that, we made some classes that would help this representation in order to answer a query. And from this, we took the class step, which contains the steps that are part of each activity, and the uh, class step types, which contains the actions of each step and the object type uh, class, which contains the uh, objects that are part of each step. To be more specific, here on the left, we can see an uh, instance of an activity which exists in the original home dataset. The template of each instance has the label of the activity, then a small description, and then a sequence of actions which are connected with an object in order to perform the activity that uh, we want. So we see each action, action is connected with an object, or in some cases there might be more than one uh, object that the action is connected with. What we did was to create an instance for each uh, one of these sequences, which, was, uh, which the class of instance was indicated by the label of the activity and then transform this sequence of action into a list of steps. We did a list of steps because in this form of representation, we could answer more to the point, let's say, questions like, what is the third action, uh, the third uh, step in the, in the activity X, or which are the steps after the third uh, step in uh, an activity X. So if we take this uh, second step here, which is equal to this one over here, uh, each, of, each one of these steps is connected with an object, a computer in this case, and an, uh, an action, as we can see also here. And the only more knowledge that it has in our uh, ontology was to give a natural language label for each object 
and for each action, which would be more uh, intuitive uh, for the uh, intuitive to get as an answer for uh, the user. After that, uh, we have constructed a mechanism on which the user could interact with uh, with the framework. So the user has two options: either to take a predefined Spartan query, which uh, represents a natural language question which were considered as the most crucial from the survey that we did. In this case, the user has to choose the activity that he wants from a list that is indicated from the system, and then he, has, he just has to give some uh, keywords in order to fill the Sparkle template. Here we can see the Sparkle template for the natural language question, which other objects are related to object 1 and object 2. On the other hand, the user can create his own uh, hand-coded Sparkle query uh, just if he can somehow uh, understand how the natural language question would be represented into a Sparkle template. For instance, here uh, we have a Sparkle template for a for an, uh, query, natural language query, what objects are needed for activity X. Looking at the architecture of our system, uh, the user could either uh, address a predefined Spark query or a customized Spark query to our uh, framework, then the first thing that our framework does is to look if there are or aren't any unknown keywords. If there aren't, the answers will be given immediately to the user. Otherwise, it will use the semantic matching mechanism that uh, searches a uh, word like DPPD and concept in order to return some recommendations that might exist in our knowledge base. Moving to the evaluation, uh, we performed two different methods of evaluation. In the first evaluation, we gathered 42 subjects and they were given uh, some batches of the predefined Spark queries in order to evaluate them how much uh, they like the answers, let's say. Uh, so they were asked to, to give a score to from 1 to 5, with one being the worst uh, for each question, uh, in order to, to show their satisfaction, let's say, about the answers from our system. So basically we want them to use, to evaluate our system in a manner of common sense, uh, based only on their own common sense. And we achieved an 82 overall score to this uh, task. In the second method evaluation of evaluation, we choose five subjects which were not part of the first uh, evaluation, in order to answer the same questions as the first evaluation and we gather some uh, sets of gold standard answers. Then, 34 subjects, which were part of the first evaluation, were given the same questions as the five people here, and the gold standard datasets in order to answer uh, those questions. And we compare these answers with what our system returns. And because our system shorts its answers, uh, we see our top 1 scores, top 3 scores, and top 5 scores. I need to mention that uh, there was a time span of 40 days between the first and the second evaluation, so we doubt that any of these 34 uh, persons remember any questions from the first evaluation. Finally, concluding, uh, what we can infer from all this procedure is that the first evaluation points that uh, we can use, any competitive robotic system can use our system as a primary or secondary uh, source of knowledge. The second evaluation, uh, based on the fact that we do not use any embeddings between the answers and the questions, we could say that we can use our, our framework for uh, evaluating as a baseline other competitive robotic systems that act in a household environment. And finally, that uh, the our semantic matching uh, algorithm can be used as an individual for semantic magic matching in other domains. So, more or less, this is it. Thank you for your attention. Everyone who wants to get the Git repo could pause the video. Here is the Git repository, and anyone, if wants something, it should be any name.